Hi all, another fun, interesting game from Leela in the Chesscom Computer Championship. Xyphos 0.3 playing against Leela 11089. This is in the Rapid Rumble, 15 minutes with a 5 second increment, stage 1. E4 from Xyphos and Leela plays the Sicilian defence. And main line until here, Queen takes D4, White wants to set up the dreaded Maroc C bind. So C4 here. This is binding that d5 square against any breaks. And usually white clamps down on b5 as well later. Knight c6, queen d3. Leela goes for a fianchetto here. Now bishop g7, bishop e2. Now bishop g4, which does seem quite logical to try and weaken white on the dark squares. And in fact, Leela voluntarily gives up the bishop without waiting to be asked, giving up that bishop for the knight. Now knight e5, and there's pressure on c4 here. Uh, we have not knight takes c4 now because there's a trap, queen a4 check, winning the knight. But there's rook c8, and up to bishop e2, there is actually now knight takes c4. White plays check, but now there's queen d7. So black is not losing a piece, but rather the a pawn, which is a good swap really because this is a more centralized pawn than the A pawn. In a way, in a, in a theoretical sense, it's a more central pawn to take off. Uh, so, Leela castles, rook d1, queen e6, putting pressure on e4. f3, so that does weaken some dark squares. Uh, on queen takes b7 here, you might ask, which does protect e4 from there as well. There is knight takes b2, this is better for black. For example, takes here rook b8, skewering queen and rook, and black ends up better. Or if queen takes, instead, knight takes e4, and this unleashes that bishop, and wins back the material with great interest, winning the exchange, black would be much better there. So f3 was played. Now the liberating d5. Very interesting. d5. White played actually knight takes d5 here. Uh, this looks like a very, very interesting position indeed. On e takes, this is quite fascinating. There is actually knight takes d5 here, and this is better for black, whatever way it's sliced. If knight takes, for example, uh, then queen takes e2. And here, if we just go back, on rook takes, there's actually bishop takes c3. So with the prospect of winning the exchange, with queen takes d5. And here, if bishop takes c4, rook takes c4. And this is much better for black. So if takes, then there's queen takes. And also a nice variation here, rook d1. Can you see what black could do here, which is really cruel tactically, if I give you five seconds. Okay, there's a slight disconnection issue. Bishop d4 check to either win the queen, if the king moves, unless the queen gives herself up, but uh, gives herself up the checkmate here. So some nice variations there with d5 are introduced, this early breakthrough, very nice uh, breakthrough. So knight takes d5 was played. Uh, also, let's have a quick look at this here, queen takes. Rook b8 is still handy in this position after queen e5 here. This is dangerous for white. A rook crashing through the seventh is dangerous. And in fact here, for example, it's actually lethal. There's big threats in this position. So for example here, bishop e5 is crashing. Rook takes, there's check winning the rook. And even more disastrous would be uh, something like g3, then the rook on the 7th is celebrated. So yeah, there's a lot of disaster variations here for either ed or queen takes b7. Uh, so anyway, knight takes d5, probably one of the safest options. Knight takes, rook takes, and now knight takes b2. Rook b1, queen c6. There's another nice little tactic here, queen c6, not moving the knight. Um, the knight didn't have too many options anyway. <laughs> so queen c6, 
if rook takes then there's bang queen takes is check winning the rook and on bishop takes well this is what happened uh, we have bishop takes so now not rook takes because check again wins the rook uh, so actually we have queen e3 and it's opposite color bishops here the rook moves bishop f6 g3 rook fd8 so you think this would be a calm peaceful uh, draw there's not too many uh, structurally it looks pretty similar uh, both have four pawns on this side of the board and their own individual pawns here isolated pawns there or potential pass pawns you could look at it but uh, we have a couple of rooks coming off and it looks as though this should be a draw rook c8 was played now the other plays really aggressively though now h5 is though to weaken the dark squares king pops out there king g7 this does imply that you know maybe the h file could be handy potentially e5 pushes the bishop back now f4 h4 so yeah clearly it's dangerous if if takes then there might be some naughty stuff with rook h8 actually this is maintained anyway bishop f3 the, the structure is maintained queen c2 queen b3 queen f2 rook b2 kicking that queen away but it checks bishop g2 queen c1 rook b1 queen c5 so you might think well this should be a draw queen takes g5 so Leela has offered now a pawn now to get an even more aggressive looking position with the king seemingly awkwardly placed i mean not many human players would necessarily want to volunteer to play like this with white uh, but white is strong on the light squares and sometimes it's better to have the king on the light square if you have the bishop without a counterpart on that color so here we have uh, rook c1 being played by the way as an alternative you if you're wondering in this position what about rook h8 then the king can pop out to g4 funny enough and this kind of scenario uh, should be still even because there's potential for checks to annoy white and queen f5 checkmate threat will keep white in a kind of virtual perpetual check situation so uh, g5 rook h8 was was okay for a draw it seems uh, but now rook c1 an exchange sack yeah white's very ambitious with this uh, so sacking the exchange outside pass pawn is this good hg we have check with taking pawn with check hg so it's two pawns for the exchange it doesn't seem that risky for white to have done that queen c2 bishop b7 check and here bishop goes there queen g7 queens come off and it should be a stable enough position if white wanted to draw this white doesn't have to move any of these pawns even white can just play uh so for example bishop b5 here this should be uh, a fortress nothing more than a fortress i don't think f5 is really helping because of the e6 liability so that that's one easy way uh of drawing just hang around there or this just hang around just protect the pawn but uh black actually goes with f sorry white actually goes with f5 <laughs> this is a top 15 engine on the ccrl racing list you you think you'd think that it's not possible to lose this with right with white right the thing is it does weaken the g5 square a bit there is a kind of weakness creeping in uh, a gap in white's armor check we have rook c4 bishop e7 and it looks as though again though white's got the prospect of f6 which is quite squishy uh, if f6 was played here you might think this is interesting to look at uh, taking here this position should also be okay for for white i believe this is okay uh, black hasn't got too many prospects white is still a pawn up for the exchange but uh, let's have a look at the game bishop b7 uh, that gives 
the A4 pawn. Okay, we have G4 and a similar, seemingly a similar scenario uh, with white squishing soon with F6. It should be a draw, right? This position. Uh, now, table bases, by the way, are at the moment max seven pieces. So several terabytes for seven pieces. At the moment, we've got more than seven pieces on the board. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This is a nine piece position. Uh, so Leela plays on anyway. Leela hasn't got table base in any case. And OK, some repetition check. And it looks as though there's nothing going on. Nothing at all. And now, yeah, we know Leela's a scoundrel. <laughs> from winning against Paul Fisbo, blundering. Fisbo blundered instead of keeping the checks, by the way. On the first rank, I I put that in the pinned comment, by the way, on the subjects of that. It should have been carrying on the checks on the first rank. Once Rook B2 check was uh, was played, it was lost, actually, for Paul Fisbo because the Queen on F7, if you remember the Queen on F7 and the King on H8, is actually controlling some key checking squares. So Fisbo had to keep drawing across the first rank away from that diagonal. Sorry, just to recap there. Uh, anyway, surely no such disaster in an end game is going to happen from this position, right? White's as comfortable as um, a comfortable kitten, you know, with its mother cat and all the kittens. Okay, that's that's the best I could come up with. As comfortable with a glove in in the middle of winter, a warm furry glove. <laughs> <laughs> okay okay anyway that's enough of that so white's comfortable here okay as comfortable as nice slippers <laughs> if you're a slippers man uh, okay so white's super comfortable okay here until it seems What's happened here? Because you might think, hold on a sec. This king's got almost got the possibility of coming to g5. That could be really dangerous, couldn't it? And in fact, because of this clear danger in the position, this bishop should be left hanging around to hit f7. To say to the king, look, if you're going to venture out, there's going to be a downside, right? If you do this, there's a downside. You know? Blackmail, you can't venture out because otherwise F7 drops. But here we, we get this move which doesn't force that downside onto the king's adventurous nature. Bishop E4 check and white is totally lost. White is toast after this move. It seems to be the losing move. <laughs> yes, I was carefully checking the evaluations throughout the, this other massive game to make sure I got the right point where the losing move. Pretty sure. Now, if this analysis changes, check the pinned comment, the variations in the pinned comment of the replayable game. For the moment, I think this is the losing move, Bishop E4 check. We're outside of the classic seven piece uh, table base engine, which table base lookup, which is I think is the maximum. So it's still a nine piece end game here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine piece. Bishop e4 check. Just for a moment, if we look at bishop b5, uh, this we can see that any king g6, uh, this kind of position, we can kick the king back. In any case, always kick the king back, keep a wall. Uh, and um, there's also the bishop coming to e8 in some lines. So anyway, bishop e4 check, we have here a big, big problem, gigantic problem uh, with this. But OK, it's so gigantic. Let me just show you bishop e4 as an example. King g6, bishop e8, just to show this downside is to keep the king in at bay, so to speak. Bang, uh, this position should be equal, yeah? Uh, because any time, you know, 
once this happens, it's going to be equal. It should be even. Uh, or bishop e8, simply putting the king back in its box, should be even. Or bishop d7, uh, this keeps the king at bay. And if bishop b5, king g5, bishop e2 here is actually uh, plausible, it seems. Uh, just about, but not bishop d1. Uh, some other strange stuff. In fact, sorry, sorry, sorry. This this is also getting very, very strange for my own stockfish 9 within chess base, these bishop b5 lines. Uh, I think this is already something which is undesirable, in fact, uh, because of king g5. This is actually really undesirable uh, to have the king on g5. Uh, and it's it's very easy to go past the point of no return or for bugs to creep in. Now, I have to admit, and I, I've shared this on, on the Discord chat, my, my Stockfish 9 and Houdini, I know they're incorrectly somehow using table base and think Bishop D1 here is, is a draw coming up. Bishop D1. And it's it's just clearly losing. It's a totally lost after you know rook takes d1 i don't know if some bugs creep into table base implementations but yeah it looks as though the whole uh concept of lending the king up to g5 though is leading to fundamental trouble and we'll taste test the software if nothing else when there was absolutely no need to uh and that's leela's finding the cracks in these top engines because everyone seems to assume that the the table based territory is solid a you have to get to table based territory um or somehow yeah if if it is going to reference it when when two exchanges happen that bridge to using it needs to be extremely safe but something's gone severely wrong here for bishop e4 check so let's go into the game king h6 this is already very dangerous because now rook c4 with this pin Black's now got the option of just transitioning into a totally one king and pawn ending because of the power of Zugzwang. So here king f3, king g5 first to give the option of rookie four for that to be clearly winning. So now the bishop just drops back. Yeah here, uh, so if king e3 we just take here and then king takes and this is again Zugzwang now bang king f4 Zugzwang end of game. Uh, so, okay, we have this position where white now gives up g4 and the rest is just a mopping up job. But yes, yeah, some weird this is going on, I have to say, all rounds. <laughs> on my local chess base with table bases, uh, I think this stuff is just not tested. And Lula's testing this stuff. It's just a technique win now. It's just total... Uh, easy with these two pawns against the bishop so it carries on for a bit let's see just for the record and two pawns installed there and then yeah anything wins maybe the leader of the sadist probably is coming out queening and um, yep no one no engine lost on time here it's checkmate anyway it's just another mystery <laughs> end game position <laughs> adding to the collection of wins which should have been draws but Leela's also drawing when she should have been winning sometimes so it seems this is a classic double-edged sword Leela not having table bases as I say a double-edged sword here uh yeah winning when she's not meant to be winning and drawing when there was a possibility of winning so we need to, to make this double edge sword we need to make it one edge one edge and one edge only if we're going to compete with stockfish nine i'm talking to leela fans here by the way <laughs> in case you haven't noticed leela fans somehow we've got to turn this double edge sword into a single edge sword okay but here it was it was working for us comments questions like shares appreciated Thanks very much.